All right, so I'm going to go through this really quick. Uh, we did this in class already. Um, but remember, we have our normal distribution. And it says that a car dealer, uh, a marine sales dealer, finds that the average price of a previously owned boat is $6,492. He decides to sell boats that will appear in the middle 66%. So that means that he's looking for this here to be 66%. So we're looking for only between the middle 66%. So what you need to do is you need to figure out, well, what's here and what's here? Well, we would then do 100 minus 66, which is then equal to 34. And since there's two equal parts and this is directly in the middle, we would divide 34 by 2, and that will give us 17. So that means 17% will be here and 17% will be here. So what we need to do then is we need to look on our, on our table, on our chart, where for this z-score and this z-score we would find by finding 0.17 on our chart so then when we look on our chart we will see that the closest z-score because we would have 0.1711 um, and 0.1685 well 1711 is closer to 17 so we will use that z-score and that'll be negative 0.95 all right so there's our z-score that would give us uh, the area to the left of this would be 0.17 or 17%. Right? Then we need to find the z-score that will give us this area from here to here. So everything else in the circle. We can find the percentage that we will need by 100 minus the, one, minus the 17, which would then be 83. So that means we're looking for the value that's closest to 0.83. So that's the area we're looking for, just like we did for 0.17. When we find that one, we'll see that that is a positive 0.95 z-score. All right, so then it says find the maximum and minimum prices of the boat the dealer will sell. So that means we need to find the X value. So we know the Z, we need to solve for our X. So our average is 6,492 and the standard deviation is 1,025. So we will then say negative 0.95, so that's the one Z score, is equal to X, which is what we're solving for, minus our mean, which is 6,492 divided by the standard deviation, which is 1,025. Right? Then we will go ahead, we'll multiply each side by 1,025 to get rid of this. 1,025 times 0.95 is equal to, so times negative point is negative 973.75 cents is equal to x minus 6492. So then we will go ahead and add 6492 to this. So then our x value is equal to 5518.25. All right, then we will have to do the same th thing for when our z score is 0.95. So it's very similar. The only difference is here, this number is not going to be negative, it'll be positive. So it's the exact same steps that we did before. So then we will get 973. 0.75 is equal to x minus 6492. We will add 6492 to 973.75. And we will get that x is equal to 7465.75. So that means the range of money that we, or the range of cars or, or marine, the boats that will be sold, that will be in the middle 66% will be between $5,518 um, $5, to $7,466. Now, if you leave it in decimals, that would be perfectly fine, like you had here, or if you round it, I would accept either as your answer. So this is the range. It then says, would a boat priced at $5,550 be sold in the store? So that means that $5,550 would have to be in this range. And since it is, because it's greater than $5,518, that means yes, it would be sold in the store because it is part of the middle 66%. All right, that's it for that question. I'm doing one other. All right, so for this one, we need to create a um, histogram. So first thing you have to do, since this isn't ordered for us, is we need to reorder this data. So we would have three, um, let's see, 13, 17. Um, the next one, I'm just going to pause this. I'm going to fill it out. All right, so we list them in order. And then we take our largest number. We subtract the smallest number. And that is an equal to 68. Now we need to figure out how many class limits we want. So since there's only 17 numbers, I'm going to just say that we want five classes. Um, so that way it kind of gives us, um, uh, 
or let's go ahead and say six classes. So we will divide this by six. So 68 divided by six is equal to 11.3, and this will always, always round up, so that means each class size will be 12. All right, then we're gonna go ahead and create our chart, which we have our class limits, our class boundaries, and our frequency. Well, our class limits, our smallest number is three, so we start with three. We will add 12 to that, so it's 15, and subtract one, so it's 14. Then each of these we will add 12 to. So that will then give me 15, 27, 39, 51, and 63. This will give me 26, 38, 50, 62, and 74. All right, the class boundaries, remember the first number you, you subtract 0.5 from, so 2.5. And then the next number you add 0.5, so it's 14.5. And our upper class boundary will always be our lower class boundary. So if we subtract 15 or we just take that number, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and fill the rest of this in. All right, and this is what we're going to use when we actually graph this. Then we will look at our frequency. So between 3 and 14, we have 2. Between 15 and 26, we have 1. Between 27 and 38, we have 1, 2, 3. And between 39 and 50, we have 1, 2. Between 51 and 62, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And between 63 and 74, we have 1, 2, 3. And now we go ahead and we create our histogram. So remember our y-axis is always going to be our frequency, which in this case, we go one to six. So I'm just gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six. And then our x-axis is always our class boundaries. So then we would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, now let me fill this in. All right, so now I went ahead and filled this in, and now I will draw my bar graphs. So the first one, we had a frequency of two, so we will go up to the two. The second one, we have a frequency of one, so at one, we'll go from here. The third one, we had a frequency of three, so that one will go up to here. Our fourth one, we have a frequency of two, so that one will go here. Next one, we had a frequency of six, so that one's all the way at the top. And then our last one, we have a frequency of three. So now if we look at this, we would say, is this normal? Now you can't go off of the appearance. Now this one does not look normal to me. If we were to draw um, our curve going around it, it will look something like this. Um, to me, it looks like it's going to be a little bit skewed to the left. Um, and then to see for sure though, we had to take our Pearson's index. So it's a formula that you will be given. Your PI is equal to three times X minus your median. Remember X in this case is your average, all divided by your sample standard deviation. So now let's go ahead and you would plug this into your calculator. So you will get PI is equal to, right? So our X was 45.2. So our average is 45.2. Our median is 52. Our standard deviation is 20.6. You can just plug that into your calculator. So then this will then give us 50, 45.2 minus 52. We will then divide this by the standard deviation of 20.6. So when we plug this into our calculator, 45.2 minus 52 is negative 6.8 times that by three. So it's negative 20.4. And then we will divide this by 20.6. And that will give us our PI is equal to negative 0.99. Now, if this is equal to, so if our PI is greater than or equal to 1, or if our PI is less, less than or equal to negative 1, then we would say that this is skewed. And it's not approximately normal. So although negative 0.99 is less than this. We would say it is approximately normal, but we just know that it's on the borderline of not being approximately normal. 
but we would say that it is approximately normal because it does pass the test. All right, if we do look back up here, it does have that normal trait as far as the way that this curve will go about it. It does look like it would have been a little bit skew left, but since it does have somewhat of this, this shape uh, and our Pearson's in index does tell us that it is not skewed because it is slightly less than that, we would say it is approximately normal, but it barely makes it. All right, that is it for this video.